Welcome back to the Midday Show. I'm your host, Ruby Nelson, and today we have a special guest, Sir Isaac Newton. Well, hello, Ruby. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I hear you're here to tell us about some science. Yes, you are correct. I'm here to tell you about my three laws of motion. Oh, very well. What are your three laws of motion? Well, my first law of motion is also known as the law of inertia. My first law states that an object's motion will not change unless an unbalanced force acts upon the object. So your first law is basically saying an object in rest stays in rest, and an object in motion stays in motion unless an, unba unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. Yes, correct once again. You must have been doing your research. An example of my first law is that, say you're like on a skateboard, and then you, you're skateboard and you go into hit the curve. So then the skateboard stops, but you fly forward while you're skateboarding. Oh. So in this example, the unbalanced force is the curve, and the balanced force would be the person in the skateboard. Yes, you are correct once again. <laughs> the, but the reason the skateboard stops, but you don't, is because the, the unbalanced force only acts upon the skateboard. And you fall forward because both you and the skateboard were moving forward. But when the skateboard stops, you will fall forward because you're still, your forward motion is still in act. Oh, I see. Sounds good. Is there any way you could show an, an example of your first law of motion? In Absolutely. I would love to. Examples my first law is pulling the sticky note from under the racer. The racer should stay in the sticky note, will come from under it. And as you see, it stayed. Very interesting. Now, since you have three laws of motion, will you please tell everybody about your second law of motion? Of course I will. My second law of motion is that the acceleration of an object equals the net force acting on the object divided by the object's mass. So your second law is saying that acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass of the the greater the mass of the object, the greater amount of force will be needed to accelerate the object. Once again, you are correct. How about you come up with an example of my second law to further test your knowledge? I accept the challenge. You is going to perform an example of my second law of motion. So we have a field hockey ball and a marble ball. Each had different masses, but we're still going to push them with the, with the same force. As you can see, the marble traveled farther because it has less mass. There. I thought she wow, you're was really good at this. You can almost beat like, me. He's not a really? What's up, um, Brian? Nice no. shoes. But maybe you, you came up with a fourth law of motion for me. Are there any more laws? Yes. Like you shoes. forgot about you my third law of motion. The most I heard of law. You know, Martinez. What is it? My I third law of motion it. is that for every yeah. action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I want to have Miss Solo. Ruby and I are going to perform my third law of motion together. So with these two marbles, we are both going to take one, and then we're going to go like this, and then come on closer. And then they should bounce off each other. As you can see, they went away from each other. Because. Okay, well it looks like the balls hit each other and then pushed off each other with the same force. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. The reason that this happened is because the force of the two balls absorbed the other one's momentum, and then using their new momentum went the opposite way that they first came. Well, you did a great job today, Ruby, and you were really super smart uh, today, and thank you for having me on your show. It was my pleasure. Bye. And thank you, everybody, for coming to Ruby's Midday Show.